Hey guys, it's Molly Marie here from BootyShorts.com and I just wanted to go over a question that I get asked all the time and that is, where do I do a boudoir photo shoot if I don't have a studio? And I just want to start off by saying that you do not have to have a studio to do boudoir photography. Um, I can guarantee you that all the boudoir photographers out there that have a studio, like me included, um, started out you know, not by shooting not in a studio. They started out by shooting in different places. Um, and then once they had enough revenue and enough clients and all of those things, that's when they invested in the studio. So today I want to give you some tips on what I did and where I shot before I had a studio and also some new ideas that I think would be really great for you guys. So my first tip where to shoot for your clients if you don't have a studio. My first tip would be to have the hotel paid for by your client. So what I did is I made a list of all the hotels in my area, which ones I loved the best and what their average price was. And then when a client contacted me, I would give them the idea um, to book a hotel and I would you know we have certain hotels in our town that have different looks to them so I um, I had just a short list of the hotels I like the average price um, and kind of what their look was and then I just let the client choose honestly because I already knew um, like I had already narrowed down to the hotels that I liked um, the light best in them and I'm not one of those photographers that makes them choose like a corner room or a certain hotel room with a certain window you know as long as it has a window I can make it work <laughs> um, so yeah that's kind of what I did and then also I did have a few clients back in the day um, you know say that they would rather spend that money towards the photos than on the hotel so I gave them the option you know of just having the shoot in their home and I know some of you have brought up the point that that you know doesn't um, sound like a great idea but I mean, I'm here to tell you, I've done lots of them in clients' homes and they always turned out to be fantastic. In fact, the clients, um, they always end up having really cool bedrooms. I had one client with this really awesome tufted headboard. I had another client with a room that was like really modern, bright colors that was really fun to play with. Um, and if you ever go into a situation where you go to a client's home and their room is like maybe not... Um, ideal for you, you know, just clear everything out and just ask them, like, do you mind if I clear out some things in your room? And I can guarantee you that they won't care as long as you put it all back. In fact, they'll probably help you. So that's my tip number one. And let's see here. Number two, um, you can always work the cost of the hotel price into your pricing and um, you can always be in charge of booking the hotel. And the only thing I would say is if you book the hotel, like let's say you're doing a marathon, if you book the hotel before you've actually booked the clients, um, don't worry because hotels usually give you a 24 hour period to, you know, change the reservation or cancel the reservation. So yeah, I mean, just keep that in mind. I mean, I'm sure that you'll book tons and tons of clients, but it's always good to not lose money. Um, so it's always good to have an option for you to get that money back in case someone doesn't book. So um, option one was hotel paid for by a client and then um, client's home. And then the third one was the hotel paid for by you. And let's see here. The third one is, um, oh yeah, you can trade to use someone's space. This is a, this one's really cool, I think. So, um, I'm sure now you have at least a couple friends, you know, that are business owners, even if they're not photographers, just business owners in general. Um, so what you can do is, let's say you have a friend who's a yoga instructor, and this is just totally an example. Um, if she has a studio space, and a yoga instructor, they always have a studio space with just plain hardwood floors. Um, so you could say to her, you know, hey, what if I did some headshots for you? Would you let me use your space? And then you could, you know, figure out the value of the photos to the value of borrowing the space. Um, and then what you could do is yoga studios are always just plain, like totally blank, blank slate with the hardwood floors. You could just bring in like an air mattress or, um, you know, linens or maybe a chair or whatever um, kind of props that you want to use for the shoot and book the girls there. And then that would save you a ton of money. It would cost you nothing except for your time um, to do the headshots. Um, otherwise, too, this is kind of random, but I know in my city we have like um, a few spaces that are just vacant. 
Um, you could think about contacting the landlord and see what it would cost you to rent that um, for like a day or a weekend or something like that. I mean, you can always say to them, you know, hey, you're not making money on this space right now anyways. Um, I mean, you don't have to say it like that, but <laughs> you can just say, you know, hey, would you mind if I, if I um, rented this for a day, you know, um, try to get a good price, just... I mean, the fact is that they're not renting it currently, and it's just a vacant space, so it's perfect. Um, and yeah, I mean, you could trade with other people other than a yoga instructor, too. I mean, just think of different business owners, and if they have a good space um, that you could use. And it doesn't have to be totally blank, either. Um, you could find someone that just has minimal things, like maybe a graphic designer. Maybe they would just have a desk or something like that with a computer. And um, either you could just shoot around that or maybe you could move that out of the space just for the day. So my next idea would be if you're not maybe at the financial point to buy your own studio or rent your very own studio, um, another option, this would cost you money, but it would be maybe to share a studio space. Um, my first studio I actually did share with a yoga instructor and um, it worked out perfectly. We shared a space, I think it was maybe 1,200 square feet, hardwood floors, blank walls. We just kept, you know, the majority of the space totally blank and then whenever um, one of us would use it, we would just fill it with whatever um, we were going to use it for. So um, we had a shared Google Calendar and I would mark off the days I wanted for shoots and she would mark off the days she wanted for yoga. And then um, we would we just had like a closet space that we built. And I would bring out, um, like before my shoot, I would show up maybe an hour early and just set up the bed and set up all the different things that I would do. And then we did also have like a little area um, where I had a TV to do the viewings. So that was, that was awesome. And that saved a lot of money um, because it was split totally 50-50. Um, utilities were split. I mean, there's so many things with the studio that you just don't even think about besides rent. Um, there's rent and then there's, you know, electric and all those things. But then there's also like garbage you have to pay for. Um, internet's really expensive. And I know business internet can cost more than personal internet. Um, just there's so many different things to think about. So, and then my last idea, which I haven't even used this idea yet. And I really want to, I'm dying to use it, but I'm going to share it with you guys first. Um, so I got this idea when I went camping last year. We went camping and all the campsites were like totally secluded they, um, they all had trees just totally around the perimeter of the campsite, so you definitely could not see in, and they were all kind of, um, you know, a ways away from each other. So if you can find a really nice campground, um, if you could rent a campsite that's secluded and private and maybe has electricity, which is possible, um, you could host maybe a boudoir marathon there or even just one shoot. And what you could do is you could... Um, stack up some mattresses or bring a blow up mattress or maybe, um, you know, just some chairs or anything that you want to use. And it could be outdoor and you could get, you know, the women really hyped up about it. I, I know that they would think it'd be a cool idea. And, um, yeah, so it'd be outdoor boudoir. Obviously you'd want like, um, a warm day and it wouldn't be able, you wouldn't be able to do it if it rained. Um, but you could also get a small tent to put on site, um, where the girls could get their hair and makeup done before, and that would be super fun. And also, um, I know this particular campsite that I found, they had a beach, and so it might be cool to maybe do, um, you know, offer, they can either do the campsite, or maybe they could do um, a bikini shoot down by the beach, um, or just anything fun like that. So those are my ideas for you guys today. I hope that those really help you out, because I've had a lot of questions about where to shoot besides the studio, and I mean, I think there's loads of different places. So those are my tips. And if you guys have any additional ideas of where you shoot or where, um, you know, just an idea of what you think would be really cool to do besides a studio, you know, let me know. And if you have any comments or questions, as always, just post them below in the comments section. So um, I would love to answer your questions. And I totally look forward to chatting with you guys next week. Have a great day. Bye.